Right Mind and Wrong Mind Once upon a time, there were two friends in a small village named Dharmbuddhi, Virtuous Mind or Right Mind, and Pabbuddhi, Wicked Mind or Wrong Mind. One day, the wicked of the two, Pabbuddhi, thought to himself that he was poor and lacked the knowledge to earn for himself. He thought of taking Dharm Buddhi to another kingdom and use his skills to make money. He thought, If I can deprive him of all the earnings, I can have all the money for myself and live happily. After some time, he met Dharm Buddhi and said to him, My friend, we need to earn money to provide for ourselves when we grow old. Let us travel to some other kingdom to earn money. Besides, unless we travel to far off kingdoms, we will not have any stories to tell our grandchildren. Dharmbuddhi agreed to his plan and took the blessings of his parents and teachers to travel to a distant kingdom. On an auspicious day, they began their journey. Both of them made a lot of money due to Dharmbuddhi's skills and knowledge. After some time, pleased with their earnings, they planned to return home. On the way to their home, as they approached their village, Pabbuddhi said to Dharmbuddhi, Friend, it will be improper for us to carry so much money home, as all our friends and relatives will start requesting us for money. Besides, there is danger of theft. He said, Let us bury the money in the jungle, where nobody will find it. We will take only a nominal amount for our needs. Whenever we need some money, we can come back together and dig it out. Without doubting his intentions, Dharmabuddhi agreed. They buried most of the money beneath a tree and returned home with only a handful of money. A few days later, a buddhi, wrong-minded as he was, went to the jungle alone in the dead of the night. He uncovered all the money they had buried together, took out all the money and closed the pit as it was before. He returned back home with all the money and hid it. After a few days, pretending that nothing had happened, he went to meet Dharmbuddhi. Friend, I have a large family and the money I had come with has been spent already. Let us go together to the place we have buried our money to fetch some more. Dharmbuddhi agreed and together they went to the place where they had buried their money and dug up the pit. But they found that the money was not there. Pabbuddhi started beating his head and blamed Dharmbuddhi. It is you, no doubt. Nobody else knew where we had buried the money. You have stolen all the money for yourself. If you do not give me my share of the money, I shall go and complain to the village elders for justice. Taken aback, Dharmabuddhi protested. I have committed no such theft. Don't put the blame on me, as I am a virtuous man. And so, they started quarreling and visited the village elders for justice. The elders asked them to pledge before the fire god to find the truth. Pabbuddhi suggested. Before pledging the fire god, we can request the spirit of the tree to stand witness. It was in front of a big tree that we had buried all the money, and it may be able to reveal to us who the thief is. The judges agreed. We shall go to the jungle together and request the spirit of the tree to reveal the truth to us. If that fails, we will take pledge before the fire god. Pabbuddhi immediately went home to his father. I have stolen a huge amount of money from Dharmabuddhi and we have taken the matter to the village elders. Your cooperation will save me and put the blame on Dharmabuddhi. Otherwise, I shall not only lose the money, but also face the risk of losing my life for stealing. His father said, My son, tell me how I can help you so you won't have to part from the money. Pabbuddhi explained. There is a huge hollow inside the big tree where we had buried the money. You have to get inside the hollow before morning, 
When all of us go to the jungle and request the spirit of the tree to reveal the truth, you have to shout from inside that dharma buddhi is the real thief. I will handle the rest. As agreed, his father went to the jungle and hid himself in the hollow of the tree early next morning. After some time, accompanied by the elders of the village, both dharma buddhi and pab buddhi went to the huge tree where they had buried their money. Pab buddhi asked in a loud voice, O oh spirit of the tree please tell us who the thief is as we have a confrontation and the village elders have come to seek the truth Immediately Pab Buddhi's father replied from inside the hollow of the tree Listen all who seek the truth Dharma Buddhi is the thief who has stolen all the money The village elders were wonderstruck They could not deny that the spirit of the tree had indeed revealed the truth They immediately started discussing amongst themselves how they should punish Dharm Buddhi for his guilt. Meanwhile, when Dharm Buddhi heard the spirit of tree speaking such, he became sure that there must be something wrong. The spirit of the tree, if it was so, is telling an untruth. That is not possible. Having seen the hollow of the tree, he put a heap of dried leaves and grass in front of the hollow of the tree and set fire to it when the fire started flaring up pab buddhi's father could not bear the heat and the smoke inside the hollow any longer he came out with burns on his body crying for pity the village elders were surprised to find him coming out of the hollow of the tree what are you doing here and what has happened to you He at once confessed his part in the scheme and explained to the village elders what his son had done. Thus, the village elders came to know the truth and decided to punish Pab Buddhi for his guilt of theft, to blame it on Dharm Buddhi and misleading the village elders. They decided to tie Pab Buddhi on the very same tree and punish. They praised Dharm Buddhi for his wit.